socialist newspaper. She's stopped the march. Nothing, fascist morons. Any luck? Well, two copies in two hours. One of them thought I was flogging war cry. <laughs> <laughs> You've done enough. Come on. See you later. Hi. Thanks. Jacobs. Rubbish. You wanted to quit. Yeah, I know, but I shouldn't have. Forget it. Tomorrow's what it's all about. And selling papers is for amateurs. Restaurant Camisele, s'il vous plaît. Bottle night in Strasbourg. Slumming it tonight, then. Oh, my God, it speaks. I'm going to be upstairs, yeah? Mark. Class enemy if ever I saw one, mate. She's playing at it. No way is she committed. Make your own bloody pasta. It's your turn. The rally starts at three o'clock in case you're still interested. I'll be there, Kath, and so will she. And if you reckon she's not going to get her hands dirty, you've got another thing coming. I think I'm getting the hang of it now, but the way to get what you want here is to come at it from the right angle. You can't just go barging in head on. <laughs> Mind you, the red tape can get you down a bit. Never use one form when 15 will do. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. I'll stop. I can hear myself banging on. No, no, go on. I'm interested. Oh, Jim. Putting up with late wives and late planes every week hasn't been easy, has it? I'm not complaining. What are you thinking about? March. What's going to happen? You frightened? No, of course not. Are you? No. I haven't felt so excited in my whole life. I mean, all people ever do is talk. As though talking would have stopped Hitler. As though it's going to stop the same thing from happening again. That's why I'm here with you. We both know that talking is not enough. Do you think Kate will be all right? Don't worry. She'll be fine once she settles in. At least we know she's going to be well looked after, I mean. Of all the tutors in Cambridge, she manages to end up with the husband of one of my oldest friends. How long is it since you've seen Angela? Ages. Too long. It'd be nice to have an excuse to catch up with her. And what's her husband like? Jeffrey. He's 
seen him a couple of times. He seemed very nice. Quite a star academically, apparently. This is a bloody awful way to live. Not that I'm complaining. I'm proud of us, you know. We've really worked hard at this. I don't think we could have handled it any better. Fish and scallops in a vegetable broth. What a scallop. Good question. Well, hang on, hang on. This could be good. Pan fried breast of wild pigeon with stewed red cabbage and black currants. With chips. I promised your mother I'd feed you properly, so choose something. 11, 17, 21, and 38. When she comes home, for God's sake, tell her we eat off plates occasionally. This interview is being taped at 18.15 hours, September 23rd. Present are Detective Chief Inspector Noland, Detective Sergeant Vesti, and the suspect Mark Holland. You do not have to say anything but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You are entitled to have a solicitor present. Do you want a solicitor? No, I don't need one. I'll tell you what happened. Union Jack T-shirt. I can't remember much else. Just your typical fascist type. Ian Taylor, 
17 years old, slim build, five foot seven inches tall. Not exactly the master race. I thought he was going to kill me. Why, uh, why was your girlfriend at this time? She was nowhere near. She, uh, I told her to stay put as we went through the police line. I didn't want her to get hurt. Um, she stayed at the top of the road with the rest of the marchers. Where did the knife come from? He was holding it. He came at me. I got hold of his arm and the, the next thing I knew we were both on the ground. There's all these people on top of us. Did you stab him, Mark? I felt something wet. I looked at my hand and there was blood on it. I, I don't know if it was me. I'm not taking a chance on what this boy might say to the police. The minute my solicitor gets here, you must tell him everything exactly as you told me. And then we'll all go to the police together. It was terrible, Daddy. Us about, Mark. We know it was you who had the knife. We know you chased the boy, held him down, and stabbed him. Miriam's been talking to us. She's here now. She saw the whole thing, and she's prepared to swear to it. I don't believe you. She was standing ten yards away from you in the road. She watched you do it. She wouldn't say that. Your girlfriend was right there. She watched you murder him. She stuffed you, son. So why not start telling us the truth? I want a solicitor. What? Get me a solicitor! Miriam came through the line with me. She was right there. She took this knife out of her pocket. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a joke. And then she stabbed him in the chest. Here. From right up close. He went down. And Miriam just stood there staring. She had blood all down her clothes. And she chucked the knife down on the ground and I picked it up for some reason. I shouted at her to get the hell out of the way. And she ran away. Why did he say it was you? I did that to keep her out of it. What do they call it? Chivalry. <laughs> I did that for her. And she betrayed me. I took off my own ring while I was trying on some others and... I suppose I must have left it on the counter and walked out wearing the wrong one. So you took the ring by accident? Well, yes. But I have been extremely absent-minded recently. Why recently, Mrs. Cartwright? Since my husband left me. How much money did you have on you when you were arrested? Nearly £1,000. Mrs. Cartwright. <clears throat> The value of the ring on your finger when you left the store was much greater than the one you left behind, wasn't it? Well, in monetary terms, perhaps, but not in sentimental value. Mrs. Cartwright, you deliberately substituted the valuable ring for the worthless one, didn't you? No, that is simply not true. I would never do anything like that. I am an honest person. Members of the jury, you've heard the facts in this case. And it's perfectly plain that the prosecution has been unable to provide any evidence of dishonesty. It was a mistake. That's all. You might feel that this mistake was due to the stress caused by the defendant's marital problems. You might also feel that it made no sense for her to steal something 
that she could easily afford to buy. What is quite clear is that on the evidence there was no dishonesty and no intention of permanently depriving the store of the ring. Hot stuff there, Jeremy. You almost had me cheering you on. I find I'm always articulate in a worthy cause. <laughs> Still, I don't suppose the words incredibly guilty mean much. Your cynicism does you no credit whatsoever, Griffiths. How do you find the defendant, Lucy Cartwright, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Well done. Oh, I didn't do anything. You were marvellous. According to Patricia Graves, Holland is still very angry and resentful, particularly towards the girl. Hardly surprising, I suppose. What's his background? Um, low middle class, not much money. Worked hard enough at the local comprehensive to get himself to university, then chucked it all in after a year when he became involved with far-left politics. Parents were devastated. They've never forgiven him. Their attitude seems to be that he made his choice years ago and they won't have anything more to do with him. His political charms are the only family he's got now. Any history of violence? Not to speak of. Renter mob appearances at demos and strikes. Nothing like this before. And what about the girl? <sighs> Wealthy parents, tolerant, liberal background, bit of a high flyer. Nothing in common with Holland at first glance. Says she was naive under his influence. So, what have you got? She says he did it, he says she did it. He admits it, then promptly contradicts himself. His prints on the knife, victim's blood on his shirt. She's a nice, impressionable girl from the top drawer. He's a Bolsheik with a chip on his shoulder. Hmm. Very promising view, James, I must say. I can't possibly accept this, Mrs. Cartwright. Oh, Lucy, please. You know, there's some people who think I might be unwise to see you. Why am I doing something wrong? No, no, of course not. And there is a view that it's best to keep one's professional life rigorously separate from one's personal. <laughs> it's a rather a stuffy view, I think. <laughs> Jeremy, you saved my life. You simply must let me do something for you. I'll uh, see you in the grill room at yeah. 7.30. Bye. Taking your work home again, Mr. Alder Martin? She's an ex-client. Well, you've done your bit. I'd leave you at that if I was you. Really, Tom, you sound positively Victorian at times. Pretty girl. Was she? Hmm. It's a perfectly innocent situation. I see nothing wrong with giving oneself a little pat on the back from time to time. <laughs> You're completely transparent, Jeremy. If she wasn't so good-looking, she'd have never even got through the door. Rubbish. It's just a meal. It would have been churlish to refuse. Churlishness has never been a problem before. Ow! The knife you say Miriam took out of her pocket, have you seen it before? Yeah, on the sideboard at her dad's place. She said it was a holiday souvenir. Indonesia or some place. Alan Jacobs says you stole it. Alan Jacobs is a lying git. He says it disappeared after you and his daughter visited the house sometime in March last year. Did you go to the house at around that time? March, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Miriam wanted to see her mum. We waited until Jacobs was away on a business trip. Why didn't you go when he was there? He hated my guts for a start. And anyway, Miriam and him had had a row. They weren't speaking. What was the row about? Politics. A little more detail would help us with your defence, Mr Holland. Anything you can remember? Her dad reckoned it was me that got Miriam into direct action. Said I was a bad influence on her, <laughs> which was a joke. The only influence he was worried about was his own. Couldn't bear having a mind of her own. The only time I met him, all he did was have a go like it was my fault. I don't need that bollocks. 
I walked out and she came with me. How long was that before the rally? About March sometime. For all I know, they weren't speaking for about six months. Were you ever on your own in the room where the knife was kept? Don't be silly. I wasn't exactly her mum's favourite pin-up boy either. She used to watch me like a hawk. Probably thought I was going to gob on the axe minster. <laughs> Do you remember what Miriam was wearing on the morning of the rally? Um, black leather jacket, blue jeans and um, some kind of light top, yellow cream, I think. Are you absolutely sure that outfit was blood-stained when she ran away? <sighs> yes, I'm sure. But what about Kathy? She was there. She'll back me up. Kathy Tyler. She had a room in the house, refusing to make any kind of statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Kathy. <laughs> Stubborn little cow. Mr. Holland. Why did you tell the police that you might have stabbed Ian Taylor? Miriam is a sister. She's one of us. We don't let each other down, you know? It's, um, not just that. Have you seen her? She's just, uh, <laughs> I mean, I would have done anything for her, anything. I was in love, really in love. And uh, the minute the coppers got hold of me, all I could think about was to keep Miriam out of it. That's how messed up about her I was. I thought she was really into it. I thought she hated the fascists and she loved me. <laughs> yes. Wrong on both counts. She was just off on some selfish little trip of her own. It can't end up like this. I don't want to go to prison for something that she did. The guy's dead. And uh, she's just going to walk away. To British justice. <laughs> it's been a wonderful evening, Jeremy. You must think I'm... Shockingly forward. I mean, I barely know you, but one senses a sort of spark. <laughs> oh, God. I must be a bit pissed. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> but pissed. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. The expiry date. Oh, utterly stupid. You'll take a check. Please, allow me. This really is too much. I've made such a hash of things. I can't even buy a meal successfully. Let's see. It's all right. Run it back a second. Pity we can't see what she's wearing. Look at her face, though. She's having the time of her life. Ten or more people in that alleyway. Whatever they saw, they obviously don't want to get involved. 
Another dozen people were arrested. What about them? Either nose down in the back of a police van at the time or fighting their own private wars. There's nothing to help us, James. I've been through the disclosure material with a tooth comb. You're eating that mushroom budgie. What about the arrest and interview? Any chance of misconduct? Police behaved impeccably at the time, which is jolly inconsiderate of them. He didn't have a solicitor, though, did he? Didn't want one. Didn't he, though? We'll see about that. Patricia Graves says the Tyler girl still might come through. <laughs> I won't hold my breath. Mm. What did we order that was red? Chicken masala. Looks awfully good. It's yours. I'll have another look at this at home. Shall I get you a cab? Oh, dear. And there was me hoping we were going to spend the night together. Unless there is some tremendously fierce ethical objection, of course. No, can't think of a single reason why not. You are a former client. What? What is it? Spinach? What? What? No. <laughs> it's just that when this week started, I thought I might end it in prison. <laughs> Instead of which, I'm going to be in bed with my barrister. Yes, please. <laughs> Away early for once. You look exhausted. Might look like that. Bursting with energy, really. Lizzie, mm. remember the anti Vietnam War demonstrations? Mm. Did you enjoy them? What? Being battened, charged, and crushed, and trampled, I loved every second. <laughs> I suppose I did a bit. I was terrified, of course, but... Excited? Oh, very. I'd never done anything remotely anti-establishment in my life before. It felt morally right and gloriously rebellious. But I never felt like killing anyone. That's what you mean. Is that what you think the Jacobs girl was after? The ultimate thrill? Well, it crossed my mind. Wouldn't it be better if you met them on your own? You don't want me there. Why? Is he going to tell us what a useless student you are? No. It's just that... Well, I'd rather not be around if you're going to talk about me. Don't worry. We won't embarrass you. I will. We're not checking up on you, Kate. Maybe your tutor, but Andrew and I have known each other forever. We were at school together. Oh, fantastic. An evening of ripping yarns from Mum's school days. <laughs> we don't often get a chance to sit down together as a family much these days. You know how much your mother's away. Oh, thanks, Jim. Well, it's true. But it's not family, is it? It's family, plus my tutor and his wife. It's embarrassing. Don't you like him? No, he's all right, but... I didn't have a career when the children were young. It was always something I wanted to see if I could do. Good for you. Maybe I should get myself a top job somewhere, see how long it would take to have to that I can't. You'd miss me, wouldn't you, darling? Of course I would. When the laundry basket reaches critical mass, he means. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is you can't let work take over your life completely. I hate the fact that family and career has to be so either or. I want my other life as well. So, got any boyfriends, OK? Shut up. Behave yourself, Matt. So, how's our cake getting on then, Jeffrey? Dad, you promised. Perhaps we'd better not talk about academic things. Mm, no, no, it's fine. Kate's doing wonderfully well. She's bright, committed, enthusiastic. In fact, I can't remember when I was last so impressed by a student. Good night.
I think I can manage without the gory details, Jeremy. A vivid mental picture no. of your sex life could ruin my entire no, day. No, Julia, this is the real thing. She's, she's beautiful, smart, witty, and absolutely loaded. You should see her place. That sounds awfully mercenary. No, 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 it's not the money. It's, it's the whole package. This woman oozes class. I mean, I don't, I don't like using the word, but I... You know, I, re I really do think that this, this might be... You know, might be love, you know. Oh, my God, Jeremy. You've only known her a few days, and for most of those, she was in the dock. Found innocent. Anyway, how else are busy barristers expected to meet new people? I just think you should be a little more cautious. You know almost nothing about her. No, nonsense. You can touch his blue chip at a glance. I just think you're rushing your fences. I'd, I'd hate to see you get hurt. Julia! It's beginning to sound as if you actually care about my welfare. You're right. Forget I said anything. Mark Thomas Holland, you are charged that on the 23rd of September last, at Cropley Road, London, South East 6, you murdered Ian Taylor. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. At the time of his arrest, the suspect was carrying the knife in his left-hand jacket pocket. It was stained with blood, as were his jacket, shirt and hands. Did you ask him where the knife came from? He said it belonged to the deceased. And could he explain how it came to be in his pocket? He said he had no memory of why he put it there. What did the accused say about Ian Taylor's death at the time of this first interview shortly after his arrest? That there had been a fight during which he had inadvertently stabbed and killed him. That's what he said, that he and he alone was responsible. Did he say anything about Miriam Jacobs' whereabouts at the time of Ian Taylor's death? He told us that she was nowhere near him at the time. We'll be hearing from her later, Inspector, but it would be fair to say that she didn't exactly support him. That's right. Then you interviewed Mark Holland again? Yes, at 10 o'clock. And uh, did you tell him what Miriam Jacobs had said? Yes. And what was his reaction to that? He completely changed his story. What is it? You've got to talk. I've been thinking a lot about things, and I'm not sure. I just think it's all getting a bit too serious. I've just left my wife. I know it's not the first time, but I've always ignored the signs before. That night you came up to Cambridge, didn't you notice anything about him? Well, he did seem a little distracted. By the time he got home, he was roaring drunk. He said I stifled him, I didn't give him enough support, that kind of thing. <laughs> I knew there was more to it than that, so I made him tell me. We had a huge row, and he walked out. Do you know who she is? He wouldn't tell me. He said it didn't matter. It does. There wasn't a solicitor present at Mark Holland's first interview. No. And why was that? Said he didn't want one. He said he didn't want one. You have said that Mr. Holland's story changed between his first and second interview. Yes. The second time, he said that Miriam Jacobs killed Ian Taylor. Yes. And he said something else, didn't he? He repeatedly said that she had betrayed him, didn't he? Yes, he did say that, but... And so... the reason he felt that was because in the first interview, he tried to protect her. He was lying that first time, wasn't he? Well, he was certainly lying at some stage. Well, let's look at that first interview. He said she was nowhere near when Ian Taylor died, didn't he? Yes. Well, that wasn't true, was it? No. Why would he have said that? I don't know. To protect her. There can't be any other reason, can there? The only reason he lied in that first interview was out of a desire to look after the woman he loved. There could have been other reasons. 
or the reasons for what? For lying. So you now accept that he was lying when he confessed to the killing in that first no, no, interview? No, 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 I didn't mean Thank you, Chief Inspector. <laughs> this is so decadent, Jeremy. Shouldn't you be out and about preventing some huge miscarriage of justice? No, nothing more glamorous than an opinion on an industrial injury claim in real. <laughs> What happened? Well, something really extremely nasty involving a crane, a packing case, and a mm. passing welder. Mm. <laughs> Circumstances are really very muddy. Mm. My job is to make them even muddy. Oh, horrid. Oh, no, no, no. I think the, the chap's expected to make a complete recovery mm. in due course. And the management can't be expected to dole out huge wads of money every time some laborer breaks a fingernail. Mm. <laughs> Mrs. Cartwright, I have an order here requiring you to leave these premises immediately. Why did you tell me this was your place? I didn't. You just assumed it was. He said I could stay here for as long as I liked. Don't you think that's a horrid way for a friend to behave? Well, why, why don't you buy your own place? can't afford it. You can't afford But what about all the money you had? There's nothing left. I mean, there is, but it's all tied up in trust funds and things until the divorce is settled. I suppose you're going to run a mile now. I'm sorry, Jeremy. I've betrayed your trust and I haven't been telling you the truth. Now, just a second, Lizzie. Look, we can work something out. You can, you, can, you can stay at my place for a day or two. My knight in shining armor. No, Lucy, listen, listen. Lucy, look, as long as you're totally honest with me from now on. All right? Mm -hmm. Tyler's agreed to give evidence. She was right there, witnessed the whole thing. It happened just the way Mark said. She saw Miriam Jacobs do it. We've got her, Mr. Kavanagh. We've got her. I see Miss Tyler's gone out of her way to make a good impression on the judge. That's Kathy Tyler. Get Graves. Meet me in court in five minutes. What are we looking for? If Tyler saw what she claimed, she must have been in or very near the alley. Now watch. you seen that tattoo before? Kathy, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You can't give everything. Why? It's not it because we've seen some news footage. I was there! No, come on. Come oh, on. You bastard! It's a sunny conspiracy! You're all in it together! Go! Mark Holland is innocent! What? Have you thought about what I said? Look, if you want to talk, we'll talk. I'll drive us out to the country and we can stay in that little pub you like so much. I'm going home. I've got to go to London. I'll give you a lift. Uh, did the accused, Mark Holland, ever come to your house? Yes, he did. And did he know where the knife was kept? Yes, I pointed it out to him once when we were talking about the Far East.
when did you realize this knife was missing, Mr. Jacobs? Sometime in March. I forget the exact day. It wasn't you who realized it had gone, was it? No, it was my wife. She told you that it had been stolen? Yes. So you went to the police and reported the theft? No. No? Why not? It didn't seem an important enough issue to involve the police. How would you describe your relationship with your daughter? We are extremely close. There was a long spell when you didn't get on very well, wasn't there? We've had our ups and downs, like any family. Ups and downs? You didn't speak to her for six months before all this happened. That was nothing more than a silly row. It started as long ago as March, Mr. Jacobs. It was March, wasn't it? Yes. And it was in March that the knife went missing. That had nothing to do with my daughter. How do you know that? It had nothing to do with Miriam. You weren't even there, Mr. Jacobs. You were away on business. <laughs> you don't like Mark Holland, do you? I have nothing against him, personally. So, you hadn't spoken to your daughter for six months, and on the 23rd of September, she's suddenly desperate to see you. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Where were you when she arrived? I was working in my study. So, she rushed in to see you? No, my wife came in, and I went up to my room. Up? Upstairs. She was in her room. What was she doing in her room? I have no idea. No idea? You just said you went up to see her. Well, I didn't go immediately. I was busy. It was a, a few minutes before I saw her. How many minutes? I don't know. Ten or fifteen. So, <clears throat> to get it straight, your wife told you that the daughter you hadn't seen or spoken to for six months needed to see you urgently, yet you kept her waiting for a quarter of an hour. Well, I had no idea the situation was so grave. You couldn't have a more urgent crisis, could you? She rushes home to see you, her father, even before going to the police? She did go to the police. When she got home, she had just witnessed a fatal stabbing. She was very upset. She spoke to the police the moment she'd gathered her wits. Yes, but she only gathered her wits after she consulted you, didn't she? Good journey. I managed to get a lift. Oh, that's nice. Everything all right? Fine. I'll be up in my room. Aren't you going to say hello to your father? He's in the study. Elizabeth. Kate forgot this. So, you were Kate's lift. <laughs> uh, could you get it for me? I'll give it to her. Um, only take a second. <sighs> Tell me this is not what it looks like. Look, um, you ought to know that Kate and I have been seeing each other. What do you mean, seeing each other? It's nothing, Jim. I should go. Is one of you going to tell me what's going on? Kate and I are having a relationship. What are you talking about, man? You're a tutor. I'm sorry you've had to find out like this. You're 30 years older than her. 24, but that's hardly the point, is it? Don't talk to me about the bloody point! You come to my house chasing after a student you're supposed to be responsible for? Dad! This is blatant harassment! I'll have you out of that university quicker than you can blink. I'll make damn sure you're not in a position to exploit young people again. I can assure you Kate is not being exploited. <sighs> Far from it, in fact. How dare you! Oh, shut up, all of you! Please! I can handle this on my own! I can't talk to you right now. I'll call you when I'm ready. Just one moment, young lady! You heard what she said. I'm sorry. I, 
I didn't mean to embarrass you. You disgust me. What about Angela? Doesn't she have some say in this? It's between her and me. Not anymore. You involved us when you took advantage of Kate. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? I'm past the point where shame has much to do with anything. Leave me alone! Just talk to me! It's none of your business. <laughs> none of my business. I would just like some kind of explanation. If there isn't too much trouble... God, I was afraid it was something like this. Kate? Kate! The, the knife was displayed very prominently. I noticed it had gone missing almost immediately. You noticed it had gone as soon as Mark Holland left the house in March? Yes. And what did you do when you realised it had gone? I checked to see if anything else was missing. Then I thought about calling the police. But finally I decided to wait until my husband came home from his business trip and I told him Mark had taken it. When your daughter visited you in March, she left with the defendant, didn't she? Yes. Mark Holland didn't take the knife, she did, didn't she? That's ridiculous. Miriam wouldn't steal from us. She took it as a gesture of defiance against her father. No. He didn't report the theft because he feared she had taken it. When your daughter first came in on the evening of September 23rd, she was desperate to see her father. Yes. And she ran upstairs and went into her room. Yes. And you went to your husband's study and told him what had happened. That's right. Were you surprised he made her wait for a quarter of an hour before going up to see her? Mrs. Jacobs? I don't remember precisely. Your husband has testified that he worked for a further 10 or 15 minutes before going to see Miriam. Is that not the case? Why? Well, I really can't. It was such a terrible evening. Well, yes, I, I suppose it must have happened like that. Well, what did you do during that time? I went up to see if she was all right. So you went into her room to speak to her? I was on the landing. The landing? Why didn't you go in? It's my daughter's private room. One doesn't just barge in. Come on, Mrs. Jacobs. You must have been worried about her. Why didn't you go in and speak to her? Oh? Why was that? She locked the door. Locked it? Why? Mrs. Jacobs, why did your daughter lock the door? Um, but because she was in the shower. Because she was in the shower. So, well, you know, what do you think? Very nice. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you like this before, Jeremy. Well, like, like what? Well, good-natured. Contentment does things to a man. Hmm. Doesn't sit quite well somehow. It's like having a Rottweiler fetch your slippers. What does she do anyway? No, Lucy doesn't currently do anything. She's resting. After the abuses of a hideous marriage and an considerable emotional turmoil. You mean she's living off you? That's a really vulgar way of putting it. Anyway, it's a purely temporary arrangement until she can sort out her financial affairs. Oh, my God, Jeremy, you're giving her money. How much? Hardly anything. A couple of thousand. Do you think that's wise? I mean, you hardly know her. So you keep saying now I happen to disagree. Much as I hate to ruin your recently improved opinion of me, could you keep your thoughts about my romantic disposition to yourself? 
I gather it was a miracle Jeremy got her off in the first place. Jules, there's only one rule when it comes to other people's sex lives. Don't interfere. Normally, yes. But what if Lucy's taking him for a ride? Look, no, no, even if she is, and I appreciate it, you've known him longer than me. But this is Jeremy we're talking about. <laughs> Moral dilemma of the day. Should one throw a life belt to a drowning rat? <laughs> You knew he was married. Yes, I knew he was married. But you got involved with him anyway. Why are you attacking her? She's only 19, for heaven's sake. It's not her fault. Nobody's attacking anyone. I just want to know what happened, that's all. I saw him a few times away from college. I liked him. He was fun to be around. I suppose I was infatuated. Do you love him now? No. So it was just a bit of a adventure, was it? That's hardly fair. Dad, I can stand up for myself. I liked him, and I was having fun, and that's all I was really thinking about. I didn't know he was taking it so seriously. You don't think a married man having an affair is serious? You tell me, Mum. You're the expert on affairs in this family. I lost sight of Mark for a moment. Then I saw him chasing someone onto the pavement. The man was wearing a Union Jack T-shirt, and he tripped and fell over a metal barrier. And where were you by the time this took place? In the road a few yards away. And what did you do when you saw what was happening? I moved nearer and shouted to Mark. I was scared. I wanted to get out. And did you succeed in attracting his attention? No. Either he didn't hear me or he ignored me. I saw him reach into his jacket pocket and then hit the boy who was lying on the ground. It was only a few seconds later I realized he had a knife in his hand. I saw him lean down again, and when he looked up, there was blood all over his shirt. Oh, you bitch. Tell him like it was. Miss Jacobs, why did it take you over four hours to go to the police with what you knew? I don't know. I panicked. I just wanted to get away, stay out of it. And I really cared about Mark. I didn't know what to do. And what made you change your mind? My father. My father asked me if I could live with myself if I didn't own up to what I knew. And in the end, no matter how much I felt for Mark, I knew I couldn't. Can you remember what clothes you were wearing when you went on the march of September the 23rd, Miss Jacobs? Yes, a uh, black leather jacket, cream top and blue jeans, I think. And you changed out of those clothes when you got home before going to the police? No, I didn't change. I was in shock. I really wasn't thinking about my wardrobe. I wore the same clothes all day. I see. Thank you. Why did you go on the march that day, Miss Jacobs? I wanted to show I was against racism and violence. You went because you found the prospect of confrontation and violence exciting, didn't you? No. What did you feel when the police line was breached and the violence started? I felt very scared. I, I didn't want to get hurt. Actually, you enjoyed it, didn't you? That's absurd. It was terrifying. You got a kick out of being that close to real danger, didn't you? That's rubbish. With your honours leave, I'd like to take this witness through the videotape evidence again.
That's not the face of a terrified woman, is it? Appearances can be deceptive. You're loving every second, aren't you? No. You were on a high of excitement, weren't you? No, I was scared. Look, I'm not on trial here. You're making things look bad when they're not. Mark did it. I saw him. I had nothing to do with it. Miss Jacobs, why did you have a shower when you got home on September the 23rd? I can't remember having a shower. Your mother says you did. And that's why you locked your door for 15 minutes when you got in. Then I must have done. I, I uh, can't remember. I was very confused. You ran into the house demanding to see your father, is that right? Yes. You wanted to see him urgently, but instead of going the few yards into his study, you locked your own door for a quarter of an hour and had a shower, didn't you? Yes. Very understandable. The events of the day had left you feeling exhausted and dirty, hadn't they? Oh, yes, I needed to get myself together. And having had a shower, you then changed into fresh clothes, didn't you? No, I did not put on new clothes. Are you seriously asking this court to believe that you went to all the trouble of having a shower only to put on your soiled outfit? Yes, because it's the truth. The reason you rushed into that shower was because Ian Taylor's blood was on your face and hands. Wasn't it? And you did change your clothes, didn't you? You changed them for the same reason that you had a shower. Because they were heavily bloodstained. Miss Jacobs, what happened to those clothes? Yes, can you give me the balance of my account, please? How much? Thank you. From what he's told me, she more or less threw herself at him. Even if that were true, it doesn't make him any less responsible. Oh, you're taking her side, of course. It's not a question of sides. Your daughter took what she wanted without a thought for anybody else. Have you any idea what it feels like to be humiliated like this, Lizzie? I want her kept away from him. Keep her away from him? Good God, Angela! He was the one who abused a position of power. Do you have any idea what an official complaint would do to Jeffrey's career? Is that a threat? Look, I'm trying to make you understand that we could take this thing a lot further than we have. If it was only up to Jim, we would, but we're trying to be fair. I don't think you're being very fair to Kate. Look, I know Jeffrey's a bloody fool, but this certainly wasn't his fault. I know you're angry, Angela, but this is my daughter we're talking about. So that's your final word, is it? I won't let you insult her. Then I don't think we have anything more to say to each other. She'd still got the knife. <clears throat> I bent over to have a look at him. There was blood all over the place. I stuck my hand where it was coming out, but there was no way I could stop it. I looked up. And she was about a yard away, just sort of staring. Her shirt was covered in blood, and she chucked the knife down on the ground. Why did you take the blame for that stabbing in the first interview with the police? The way I felt about her then, I would have said anything to keep her out of it. That probably seems dumb, but I never met anyone like that before. Why did you change your mind? 
I had a chance to think. Then I heard all that crap she'd come up with about me doing it. I realised she was just going to walk away and dump me in it. She betrayed me without a second's thought. I realised I was on my own. I think I need more space. Do you know what's going on with Kate? She won't talk to me. It's possibly because your temper goes between 0 and 60 in five seconds flat. Yeah, you're right. I should be calmer. He's in his 40s, married with three kids, a serial adulterer and stroppy with it. What more could a man want for his only daughter? She'll be all right. She's tough. I miss you. I miss you, too. I've done some asking around. These are statements from some of the men Lucy's deceived. She poses as a wealthy aristocrat, temporarily embarrassed for cash, takes them for everything they've got, then moves on. She's a complete fake, Jeremy. If you don't take action, she'll ruin you professionally and personally. What on earth gives you the right to interfere in my private life like this? Probably nothing. But it's done now. And even if you never speak to me again, at least you'll have to do something about Lucy. Julia. She's been cashing forged cheques on my account. Rather a lot of money, as it happens. If I press charges, it'll have to go to court. I'll look a complete idiot. A laughing stock in the eyes of the profession. That's exactly what she's banking on, that you'll be too embarrassed to take any action. There's something else that you might not understand. Whatever it might look like, I happen to believe that she's genuinely fond of me. Mr. Holland, it was Ian Taylor's blood on your shirt, wasn't it? Yes. Your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Yes. You did make a statement admitting you killed him, didn't you? Yes, I did, but that was before... Nobody saw Miriam Jacobs with the knife, did they? No. Nobody apart from you has placed her positively at your side while Ian Taylor lay dying, have they? No. She wasn't there, was she? No, she was there. This attempt to pin the blame on her is nothing more than a desperate ploy to get yourself out of trouble. I'm telling the truth. It's just your word against hers, isn't it? Yes. And my word counts for something. And neither she nor her family can be trusted, can they? No. You can't trust any of their class, can you? No. They're all liars, aren't they, these class... Yes, the own. whole corrupt, stinking lot of them. You hate them just like you hated Ian Taylor, don't you? Yes, they're as bad as him and his kind, yes. And they deserve to die too, don't they? <sighs> I didn't kill him. I put it to you, Mr Holland that the only person lying here today is you. How many more times do you want me to... F How many more times do you want me to say this? Ian Taylor stood for everything you hated, and that is why you killed him, isn't it? If it wasn't for Miriam, Ian Taylor would be alive today. I just don't think I feel the way you want me to. I'm sorry. Well, you did to begin with. I don't know. I was very flattered. I was having an awful lot of fun. But that's all it was. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, no point brooding. It's not really so important, is it? But I thought you... Thought what? That I was taking it all deathly seriously? <laughs> Come on, Kate. You weren't the only one having fun, you know. But you told Angela. Well, you don't seriously imagine I was going to leave her, do you? No. Our marriage has been through worse things than this. It'll survive, I expect. Then I don't understand why you were so upset. Oh, probably a case of my vanity being bruised. I overreacted, that's all. 
<laughs> Don't worry about it, Kate. It's um, probably coming to its natural conclusion anyway, isn't it? I suppose so. Oh, all's well that ends well. People coming to see you. What people? Police people. I've asked them to talk to you about the money that you've been stealing from me. Ah. Look, I, I was going to repay you as soon as I could. Well, I'd better be off. What's the point? I'll find you in a moment. All the same. I think you should know that I won't hesitate to prosecute. I'll just say you gave me the money. It'd be awfully messy. Well, I must dash. For what it's worth. You were great fun. Thank you. You're a bit of a shit, of course. The right woman could make something of you. I'll bear that in mind. Look, I know how you feel about all this, but I don't want it to go any further. I don't know. Your, your father's very angry. It's my life, Mum. It should be up to me to decide. I don't want you to report Jeff to the college. Well, I'll talk to him, if you're sure that's the way you want to play it. I want you to know it's over. Well, I can't say I'm sorry. And, Mum, what I said the other day about your affair, I was wrong. And I'm sorry you lost a friend because of what I did. I really messed up, didn't I? What do you want? I heard about Lucy's arrest. It's good for a giggle, isn't it? Silly, vain barrister falls for blatant con woman. I came to say I was sorry. I think what you did in reporting her was right and brave. Julia behaved outrageously. What possessed her to interfere like that? I think she did what anyone should do for a friend. She looked out for you. Mark Holland has told you that Miriam Jacobs committed this offence. But I suggest the evidence tells you otherwise. It was Mark Holland who led the chase into the alley. It was Mark Holland who fought with the victim, Ian Taylor. It was Mark Holland who was caught running away after the killing. And having been caught, covered in his victim's blood, it was Mark Holland who had the murder weapon in his pocket. And if any doubts remain in your mind, Mark Holland himself has told you, through his first interview with the police, that he was holding the knife as it penetrated Ian Taylor's heart. A large number of people chased Ian Taylor down that alleyway. One of whom was Miriam Jacobs. A large number of people were involved in the tussle. One of whom was probably Miriam Jacobs. There is no evidence that Mark Holland produced the knife. In fact, the knife belonged to Miriam Jacobs' father. However, even if you disbelieve all or part of her evidence, it does not automatically follow that Mark Holland is innocent. There is direct evidence linking him to this crime, and there is also the matter of his confession, which you may feel is uh, very significant. Now, you must take all these factors into account as you consider your verdict.
Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict on which you all agree? We have. On the charge of murder, how do you find the defendant, Mark Holland? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> Mark Thomas Holland, you have been found guilty of a vicious and cowardly murder. There is only one sentence allowed by the Lord in these circumstances. You will go to prison for life. I'm sure Mr. Kavanagh would talk to you about the possibility of an appeal, Mark. Mark? I wish you'd seen her that morning. She was magic. So clear. So determined. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to go through with it. Frightened I'd let her down. I just wanted to be as strong as she was. She put the knife in my hand. After that, it was easy. There won't be an appeal. She's not walking away from this. Congratulations, Mr. Kavanagh. You did a first-class job. Did I? He's going to prison for life. Yeah. But you may damn sure he's not going to be the only one. To the end of a nightmare. <laughs> yes, well done, darling. <laughs> I'll go. Jacobs, we have reason to believe that you were involved in a conspiracy to murder Ian Taylor. This is a warrant to search these premises. Daddy? Daddy! At least Lucy had the decency to plead guilty and spare you a court appearance. Yes, she's probably banking on a lighter sentence. Perhaps she genuinely wanted to save you any more pain. What? I mean, maybe you were special. Perhaps she really did have a soft spot for you. I think that's remarkably perceptive of you, Julia. They planned it together. She thought she was in the clear. Have you told Kate about this? She's got other things on her mind. Anyway, she's not here very much anymore. She'll still be able to sleep here. She'll be fine. Are you sure you really need a study? Oh, yes. Especially now. This is my last trip to Strasbourg. Here's my letter of resignation. Look, if this is because of the cake business... Well, something to do with that. The job just isn't what I thought it was going to be, that's all. I, I don't want you coming back on my account. Matt and I are managing just fine. Don't you want me to come back? Of course I want you to come back. Well, then, I will. All right, fine. <laughs> That's settled, then. Aren't you pleased? Yeah, of course I'm pleased. I miss the big car and the minibar, though. <laughs> 